Hi everyone, I'm glad to present my paper entitled Exploration with Limited Memory. So in this presentation, I will focus on the algorithm for streaming coin tossing and uh, to give you an idea of the problems we are going to solve. This is a joint work with my advisor, Sepra Asadi at Rutgers University. So let's get started. Consider the following problem. We are giving n coins with annual biases, and we want to find the most biased coin, namely coin star. So here, by seeing the most biased coin, I mean the coin with the highest probability to appear one or hat. In this presentation, I will use this graphic to denote the most biased coin. Actually, I have the reason, and uh, I will let you know later. So we are also giving a gap parameter delta, which is the gap between the most biased and the second most biased coins. So a natural way to solve the problem is to toss each coin multiple times, record the empirical biases, and pick the coin with the highest empirical bias and the most biased coin. So the problem is randomized by nature, and usually we are interested in finding the most biased coin with constant high probability and the minimum number of coin tosses. So here we define the number of coin tosses and the sample complexity of the problem. So this is a pure exploration problem in the field of TCS and machine learning, and it has many interesting applications. For example, uh, to find the Amazon batch center, typically we will sample each product for several times and decide the, which product is the most popular based on the information. Other applications across different domains can also be more or less linked to the coin tossing model. Notice that this pure exploration model is also a classical problem in reinforcement learning. For example, the popular multi arm bandit problem is actually a variation of the coin tossing model. So we will see more on this later. The problem has a naive solution. We can simply toss each coin uh, O log n over delta square times and pick the one with the highest empirical bias. By a simple turn off and union bound argument, we can show that with high probability, the picked coin will be the most biased coin. The drawback of the algorithm is that tossing each coin O log n over dot square times seems a little bit too much. Well, it turns out that we can improve on that. So the median elimination algorithm proved by Evander et al. actually reduced the number of coin tosses for each coin from O log n over dot square to constant. So the idea is to use multiple rounds. At each round, we toss the coins, record the empirical biases. And then we will remove half of the coins with the lower empirical biases. For the remaining half, we will send, send it to the next round with an increased number of coin tosses. So the correctness of the algorithm can be proved by the fact that at each round, we are increasing the number of coin tosses for coin star exponentially. So the probability for us to lose coin star decreases exponentially as the round goes up. So if we apply a union bound over all the rounds, we can get a convergent probability, which is a small number for losing coin star. So with constant high probability, we will have coin star in the end. On the other hand, for the simple complexity, well, although we are increasing the number of coin tosses for some of the coins, we are actually decreasing the number of coins with a more aggressive factor. So overall, we are decreasing the number of coin tosses as the round goes up. So if we sum up the coin tosses over all the rounds, it converges to asymptotically a over dot square. There is also a matching lower bound for the number of coin tosses of median elimination, proved by Manner and Cicicles. It basically said that for any algorithm to prove the most biased coin with constant high probability, this number of coin tosses is necessary. So the median elimination algorithm basically solves the asymptotical simple complexity of the coin tossing problem. And there are also other variations of the problem which were studied by other research. 
So having solved the sample complexity problem in the Cohen-Tosi model, let's change our perspective. Let's think about how many cones we need to store to find the most sparse cone. So the problem becomes interesting because in modern day large scale applications, so the storing cones becomes more or less expensive. So let's say when the number of cone, available cones goes to million or even billion, then we really want to solve the problem with storing a small number of cones as possible. So we study the problem under the streaming coin tossing model. So here we have a stream of cones and we are rated one by one on the fly to the memory. So for each arriving coin, we, we can choose to toss it, we can choose to store it, and we can also to toss a stored coin to compare with it. But remember, if we choose not to store a arriving coin, then we will lose it forever. For more concrete illustrations, so let's say the algorithm reads a stream of coins, and for the first coin, uh, it push a button to store it, and upon reading the second coin, for some reason, also decides to store it, and upon reading the third coin, well, for some reason, it decides not to store it, and we push a button not to store it, then this coin will be lost forever. So upon reading the last coin of the stream, it will output a coin from the store coins. So we define the memory complexity as the number of coins we ever stored in this model. Also, this can be named as space complexity. So we realize that there are also other sources of memory complexity. Let's say if we are going to maintain a counter, then it will additionally introduce some bit complexity. But here, let's just assume that the number of bits to store each coin is really large, so that we only care about the number of coins to store as the memory complexity or the space complexity. So let's step back a little bit and look into the algorithms we have now. So for the naive algorithm, we don't have the optimal sample complexity. And for the median elimination algorithm, we have the optimal sample complexity. However, on the other hand, the naive algorithm can be straightforwardly integrated into the streaming coin tossing model. We can on the fly replace the stored coin if it's defeated. So in this way, we can solve the streaming coin tossing model with a naive algorithm by only store one coin. On the other hand, for the median elimination algorithm, we inherently need to store all the coins. So this actually brings us to our motivation. What is the trade-off between the sample complexity and the space complexity in the coin tossing problem? To better understand the problem, we designed the an algorithm with an improved space complexity. So the idea is to simulate the median elimination algorithm. So we use multiple levels to simulate multiple rounds. At each level, we only store constant number of coins. Upon the level is full, we toss each coin for several times and send the most biased one to the, to the higher level. And also, we are going to increase the number of coin tosses in the same manner of media elimination. For showcase, let's say a stream of coins is here, and then level one, we will rate the first coin, second coin, third coin, and fourth coin. And then it will toss each coin constant times and send the most biased coin to level two. So by doing so, only a fourth of the coins can ever reach level two. And for the next four coins, the algorithm will also rate uh, them one by one, and then toss each of them constant times and send, send the most biased one to level two. So eventually level two will be four, and then we will increase the number of coin tosses by a multiplicative factor of 1.5, and then send the most biased one to level three. And by doing so, only one sixth of all the coins can average level three. So the correctness of the algorithm can be proved by the fact that the probability of, lo of losing coin star decreases exponentially. And the sample complex can be proved in a same manner of media elimination. The uh, overall coin number of coin tossing is decreasing exponentially over the number of levels. And for memory complexity, 
since we are decreasing the number of available coins exponentially, it can only have O log n levels. And if we are storing only constant number of coins at each level, then the memory complexity is O log n. So having designed the algorithm with O log n space, we also improve the space complexity to O log star n. So the idea is that since we are using a round-based simulation for the log n space algorithm, we looked into the aggressive elimination mechanism in Agarwal et al. Uh, 2017. So the aggressive elimination algorithm will only use uh, log star n number of rounds so that with the same idea, we have a uh, log star n space complexity algorithm. So log star n is really a small number and for any realistic input, five to six coins will be enough. So we are really reaching the space lower bound for the algorithm with this mechanism. But is this also the space lower bound for the problem itself? Well, we conjectured it is, but it turns out it isn't. So our main result actually proved that there exists algorithm that finds the most bias coin with constant high probability with asymptotically optimal sample complexity and only storing a single coin. So we find the algorithm really cool because there's no sample space trade-off. We can achieve the best of both worlds. Also, this is a streaming online algorithm, which means the moment we have the most bias coin, we can output it already. We also extend the algorithm to top k coins, and we get a algorithm with asymptotically optimal sample complexity and OK space. I will talk about this in more details later. So we also extend our algorithms to noisy comparison and multi unbandness So for noisy comparison or noisy ranking, the problem is defined by to rank the top K items. But when we are querying the rank uh, between the pair of them, with some probability, we can get the wrong answer. So usually the algorithms for coin tossing, multi unbanded and uh, noisy comparison are not exchangeable. But here, surprisingly, our algorithm, our coin tossing algorithm can solve noisy comparisons. And for the multi unbandness well, it's a variation of the coin tossing model. It is a little more difficult because we have no gap guarantees. Currently, we have a O log star in memory algorithm, and we are working towards a one arm algorithm. So now we are going to introduce our main algorithm, which we name it Game of Coins. So why does it have such a cool name? Well, since we are only storing one coin on the fly, we will name the stored coin as the king. So for each arriving coin, if there already exists a king there, it will trigger a king challenge. By the end of the day, uh, either the king or the challenger will be declared defeated and will discard the defeated guy. So for example, we have a stream of coins and all want to get the throne to be stored. So now I can tell you why I use this graphic, because this is Lion King coin, and let's say this is Simba, and we always want Simba to get to the throne and defend it. Let's say now the first coin comes, uh, because there's, there was no king here, so it becomes the king automatically. And the second coin comes to challenge it, and for some reason it, it does not defeat it, so it's, itself it is discarded. And then let's say our real Simba comes, and it defeats the king and becomes the king itself. Notice that Simba still has to withhold the challenge from all these coins. So there are always three aspects to take care for the one coin algorithm. Soundness, which means coin star, has to become the king. Completeness, after coin star becomes the king, it should not be defeated. And efficiency, which means the number of coin tosses cannot be too much. So our first idea is to simply toss each coin only constant times and declare the loser to be defeated. So this is the best way to bound the efficiency. And some is actually held by a turn of bound argument. But for completeness, it's uh, problematic because if coin star becomes the king at first, it can only has a constant probability to, to defend the throne. However, the stream is of theta n length, so eventually it will lose. So the lesson here is that we have to give the king some privilege. We cannot uh, discard it immediately after it is outperformed by some other guy. 
So our second idea is to bring the multi-level challenge to the, uh, to the algorithm. So if a king is after performed by some challenger, we will not discard it. Instead, we'll give it a second chance. Uh, we'll increase the number of coin tosses and do the comparison again. If the king loses again, we will uh, again bring up the uh, level. So a king is only declared defeated if it loses with uh, around a log n number of coin tosses because at this level, the real coin star should win with high probability. So the sum is holds because of the similar arguments of media elimination, the completely holds by turnoff and union bound. However, the efficiency is problematic. So if coin star comes first, then it's good. But if coin star does not come first, then other coins can compete with each other and there's no row between them. Each pair of them can use a log n number of coin tosses which is will mess up the efficiency. So after re-examining the two ideas, we find that, so we have to give the king some privilege, but we cannot give every king such privilege. To solve the dilemma, it leads to our main idea of budgeting. So we will give each coin a budget once it becomes a king. And for each arriving challenger, we will increase the budget by a constant number. So each budget will be responsible for two coin tosses, one for the king and one for the challenger. So to integrate it into the main procedure of our game of coins algorithm, well, after each coin arrives, we first increase the budget of the king and then we will do the king challenge. So we will first toss both of them for constant times. And then if the king loses, we bring it to the higher level in the same flavor of the median elimination and our previous algorithms. So here in the algorithm, a king is only defeated if it exhausts all its budget. So the efficiency actually holds because over the stream can only collect two n times o one over that square budget, and each budget is responsible for two coin tosses. So overall, we are only uh, using o, o, o n over that square coin tosses, which is constant on average. So for soundness. We have shown that coin star can defeat other coins at any level. So unless the budget is infinity, which it won't, coin star can always become the king and kick out some other imposter. So suddenly it actually holds. For completeness, it's a little bit more convolved. So let's consider the case that coin star first becomes the king, which is the worst case. So the expected number of coin tosses at each step is constant and it should be smaller than the budget. So the overall speaking, the expectation of the budget is positive, but this is not enough. So at each step, once the budget of coin star goes to zero, it will be kicked out. So for more concrete illustration, the budget of a coin star is only desired when it never goes to zero. So if at some point it goes to zero, Maybe at a later point it can go, go back up again, but it doesn't help because we already kicked out. So if we are going to characterize the behavior of the budget, well, at each step it will increase by this number and decrease by this number. And with the exponentially decreasing probability, it can go uh, up higher for the backward of, of the quantity. So this actually reminds us of a classical random walk, which with probability more than half, it will go plus one, and the probability less than a half, it will go minus one. So we have a concrete knowledge on this. We know that with constant high probability, this walk never goes to zero. So if the quantity is like this, then our budget is good. But does our budget behave in the same way? Well, it turns out because we have some worries, because we have multi-levels and this is unbounded. So the variance are two-folded. We may have too many backward walks or the variance can be too large. For illustration, well, if we have too many backward walks, then the expectation of the budget will be negative. And there's really no way for us to bound the positive budget over the theta stream. And also if the variance is too large, well, maybe at this point we accumulated some good budget, but here we crash to zero immediately. So fortunately, according to our uh, game of coins king challenging rule, the above two bad scenarios do not happen with constant high probability. So this is because the number of coin tosses of our challenging rule 
actually follows a sub-exponential distribution. So we can show that because we can first uh, show that the expected number of uh, backward uh, walk is small. So this is easy to show. And then we can show that even it goes to a higher level, uh, the quantity is not too crazy. So the variance is bounded. So upon showing the, uh, the pattern of the budget actually follows a sub-exponential distribution, we can apply Burstkin's inequality at each step, get a convergent sequence, and apply union bound over the theta and the stream. So the completeness actually holds, and our game of coins algorithm solves the problem. So I want to briefly talk about the top k coin algorithm. So it is a natural variation, and now the model is a little bit different. So the gap is now dot k, which is between the k and k plus minus most bias coins, and there's no guarantees on the top k. So the problem is interesting, and it has a broader range of applications. And with our one coin algorithm, it's not very hard to get an OK log star memory algorithm and an OK log k memory algorithm. The k question is, can we got a OK space algorithm? Well, it turns out we can, as I have introduced before. Our results on top k coin uh, is an algorithm with the asymptotically optimal number of coin tosses and OK space. Limited by time, I cannot talk about too much details but I will briefly talk about the challenges and the ideas to solve the challenges. So the first challenge is about sample complexity. So if we collect OK coins, do OK comparisons, but only emit one coin, then it will inevitably introduce a K multiplicative factor to the sample complexity, which is not optimal. So the idea to deal with this is to use delete challenge. So we collect OK coins uniformly at random pick a challenger and we will eliminate OK coins to ensure the sample complexity. The second problem is the survival of the top key coin because one top key coin may eliminate another. Uh, for a showcase, consider if this guy is the very top coin, the top one coin, and this guy the top five coin. And uh, after this guy comes, it can outperform, it can defeat all of these kings. But if we eliminate this guy, we will lose a top key coin. So this is clearly not, not desired, and we have to be more lenient to a defeated king. So the idea is to not to eliminate a king after it is defeated, but to swap it out and to put it into a buffer. So for example, so if this guy comes and defeats many coins, and including two kings and one of the top key coins, then we will uniformly at random sample one of the defeated kings and swap it out with the challenger, put it to a buffer. So it turns out the idea actually works because we can show that eventually there will be a case that a top k coin will swap out a non-top k. And also the top k coin cannot stay in the buffer for too long a time, so it will not risk itself to be discarded. So in conclusion, in this paper, we studied the sample space trade-off in the coin tossing problem. We showed that there's no trade-off, there exists an algorithm using asymptotically, asymptotically optimal coin tosses and by only storing one coin. And we also extended the results to finding top K coins, noisy comparisons, and multi arm bandits. There are also some open questions to explore. So for multi arm bandits, because it's a little bit harder, there's no gap guarantee. So now we only have an O-log star in memory algorithm. We want to extend this to a one-arm algorithm. And also we want uh, an instant optimal bound. So instead to have O-n over dot square sample complexity, or maybe we can get a summation of one over dot i square. So we, where dot i is the gap between the most bias coin and the ith coin. We are also interested in the application of the algorithm. That's it. Thank you.